みなさん、こんばんは。エドです。Welcome to Thursday Talk Show Episode 2. Today, I will be speaking to four promising young Malaysians who are pursuing their further studies with Japanese universities and colleges. And if you audience have questions for them, write them in the comment box. Before, hi, and before I welcome them online, here's a short video clipping of our four guests. Boku wa Amir Shafiq bin Armides, Amir to yon de Grasai. Keda no arosta karakimasta. Rai nichi shita no wa, shigatsu no 2019 nen datta. Ima wa gunma kogyo koto senmon gakko de benkyo shite mas. Kosu wa, bushitsu kogakubu des. To, shumi wa, anime emuro koto, geemu suro koto, uta o kiku koto des. それと、まあ、毎日の生活といえばあの高専は月曜日から金曜日まで大体8時50分から午後4時までです。えっと、寮で住んでます。まあえっと、毎晩、えっと、自分で料理作,る作って、えっと、週末は。Uh, 買い物したりしてまあ時々、uh, カラオケとかあそ、uh, ど,こどこかで遊ん,遊んだりすることがあるんではいじゃあ以上ですありがとうございましたよろしくお願いします、えー、皆さんはじめましてリュウジュンヘンと申します出身はマレーシアのコアラルンプールです。私は今、立命館大学産業社会学部の2回生です。去年、つまり2020年に日本に来て、今、2年目です。私は今、京都に住んでいます。今、私の後ろに映っているのは、京都の有名な神社、北野天満宮です。北野天満宮では、えー、学問の神様、つまり勉強の神様が祀られていますなので入りたい学校に合格したい、えー、難しい試験でいい成果を出したいという人は、えー、ここを訪れると、えー、願いが叶うでしょう皆さんもぜひ京都に来るチャンスがあればここに来てみてはどうでしょうか、えー、私からは以上ですありがとうございましたママシャイムマです。神戸大学の3年生です。マリンジェネリング学校の学生です。神戸に住んでいます。マレーシアのペナンから来ました。えー、と私の趣味はコンセプションの読むことです。これは私の家です。私は先輩の2人と一緒に住んでいます。えー、とほら、ここの猫は私たちの猫です。名前はミャと呼んでいます。ミャーミャーと言ったらすぐに来ます。ちょっと大きいですね。でも最初にもらったのはもっと大きいです。10キロ以上と思いますから、今はちょっと痩せました。<笑>かわいい猫ですね。よろしくお願いします。皆さんこんにちは、ローリンです。今、文化服装学院にあるバックデザインを勉強してます。私21歳になります。じゃあ、私の日本の生活を紹介していきたいと思います。楽しみにしてください。
Hi, Amir san, Liu san, Shari san, Lauren san. Welcome to the show. And thank you very much for sharing your valuable time with us this evening. My questions to you guys falls roughly into three main areas. Why Japan? Your life in Japan and your future plans. And we are going to spend about roughly 15 minutes or so in each area. And lastly, and if there's any questions, we'll pick up from the audience. Shall we begin? I mean, we are doing chemical engineering. Shahil is in marine engineering. Liu is in media sociology and Roland in fashion. I would like to ask, why do you do this course not in other countries, but in Japan. How did you end up in Japan? And how did you first study the language? And what was your experience? Shall we begin with Armeza? Yes. Hi. So, uh, why Japan? Well, because firstly, um, there was a chance to go abroad in, from uh, JPA sponsors, so I took the chance uh, from there. Uh, for why? Because I didn't, well, simply because I just wanted to enjoy living, how to, uh, living in Japan enjoy sightseeing everything i mean the culture and stuff so that's why oh okay but uh thank you very much i mean how about shahil oh shari sang hi oh so i first want to study in japan because i actually in my high school i joined the Japanese dancing club, I think we call that. No, it's Japanese culture club. And I actually like become one of the highest, one of the high ranking person. So I become a manager, coach and teacher for the Kohai. And from there, I actually like, I began to love Japan and its culture. I also met with many other Japanese citizens such as, uh, I forgot these names, their names. So after that, uh, when I graduate from high school, I applied for JPA Mara scholarship and got to AAJ, Abang Aswan Jepun, uh, centered in University Malaya. So from there, I went to, I study and get my preparation school and then I come to Kobe University in Japan. So, yeah, I think that's what, that's how I actually got my got interested in Japan and I love, I actually love living here right now. Thank you. I, very interesting. Now you, you, you're involved with Japanese culture and Japanese language when you're in high school. Very interesting. Thank you, Shari. How about Rowan's? Okay, so why I want to study in Japan is because in my family, we were like, my family loved Japan and then so like we used to travel to Japan, like, okay, not very often, but then after that, I fell in love with Japan. Then in my high school, I got to, I got to go to like student exchange to Japan in Shiga. And that's when like, I really get to know the culture and like get to communicate with the Japanese. Then I learn, like, I just really like fall in love with Japan. And like, I was like, maybe I want to study here next time. So then that's why I chose Japan. Yes, that's all. I see, very interesting. Thank you very much. You fall in love with Japan before you start learning Japanese language or, yes. or start thinking about Japan. <laughs> yes. <laughs> interesting, interesting. Thank you, Lauren. And how about Liu, Liu san, Ikanga de Shoka? そうですね。あの、私は今、えっと、日本の大学でメディア社会学っていう
って、そもそもなんで、あの、まあ、あの、日本では、あの、海外ではなくて、日本で、この、ことに、この,あの専門をしているかという、この専攻をしているかというと、あの私は日本の,あの、まあ、コンテンツ産業がとても好きで、まあ、コンテンツ産業というのは何かというと、あの例えばアニメとか、えー、とドラマとか、それとバラエティ番組とか、そういうのが好きで、それを研究したいという、あのと,かんとずっと考えていたので、あの、この、なので、あの、まあ、もちろん、マレーシアに,にも、あの、メディアを勉強できる、あの、大学がいっぱいありますし、特に、あの、まあ、その、マスメディアコミュニケーション専攻、まあ、メスコンを勉強できる、あの、大学がいっぱいあると思うんですけれども、ただ、やはり、日本のコンテンツ産業について勉強、あの、研究するなら、あの、日本、日本に行った方が一番、いいかなと思ってあの日本を選びましたでそもそもあのなんで日本に、えー、行こうと思ったかというとで私は小さい頃からあの日本のものに囲まれて生きてきましたあの、まあ、例えば日本の家電ホームアプライエンスとかあの、まあ、日本それこそ日本のアニメとかにあの囲まれてでずっとあの生きてきたんですけれどもで、あの、高校の頃、あの、将来、まあ、つまり、俺のフュー、私のフューチャーについて、あの、考,あの考えたときに、やはり、日本に行きたいな、という、あの、結論に、えー、ついたので、えっと、で、それで、あの、高校の頃から本気で、あの、日本語を学ぼうと思いました。で、最初は、あの、まあ、自分で教科書を買って、あの自分で勉強するのがほとんどだ,だったんですけれども、まあ、つまり独学で日本語を勉強していましたが、ただ、あの私は独学があまり得意ではなくてあの、ペースがとても遅かったです。なので、その後あの学校の日本語クラブに入って、で先生のもとで勉強していて、あので高校を卒業してから、あの提供マレーシア日本語学校という、あの日本語を、えー、専門にする、日本語の専門学校に入った、あの日本語学校に入ったんですけれども、でそこであの日本語を勉強し,しながら、あの日本の,あの経済とかあの文化とかにあの触れるチャンスも、えー、増えていました。もうちょうどそのの時にあの日本のえー、そういう、まあ、例えばアニメとかあのバラエティ番組とかをたくさん見るようになったので、えー、今につながりました。以上あ,ありがとうございました。とてもあれ深く触れてますよね。日本の文化とか日本のメディア。すごいですね。ありがとうございました。Thank you, thank you very much for, your, for the answer for, for the first set of questions. はい。Now let me ask you about your life in Japan. How was it when you first arrived in Japan? Were you well prepared for it? Maybe you give us some example, some episode of your, of your life, perhaps. And what did you enjoy most and why? And I'm sure there, there might be some small obstacles here and there. And what were they and how did you overcome it? Yeah? All right. So, perhaps again, maybe we will start with Amil san. Hi, s i l a k a Amil san. When I first came to Japan, it was very cold because it,、uh, it was at the beginning of Haru, which is spring. And then、um, I didn't do Well, since I have like broken Japanese and stuff, uh, so when when I first came, my my senpai, my senior, took took in me from the nearest eki, which is to、uh, Takasaki eki, and then they escorted me to the kosen, and from there, we. Had lunch, 
we took some we went kimono at the nearest eon aeon there were uh, a bunch of stuff that i didn't know that i needed but my senpai they helped me a lot so about the what i enjoyed most during uh my study here my studies here i mean my studies in japan is i enjoyed making friends i entered engekibu which is drama club and i made tons of friends from there uh kohai and also the senpai in there one of my closest friends which is a, a japanese uh he he is now uh doing his senkoka which is like the form six of course here, here, and then uh sometimes he will uh ask me uh, he will uh ask me if i want to go go out eat or karaoke with me so i was really having fun so that's it i guess <laughs> I right, thank you thank you very much for very interesting especially when you have senpai around that can help you all right it is be very very helpful I right, thank you very much Amir san hi right, how about shall you san uh so my first impression when i come in japan actually like when i actually drop from the airplane it's very cold i don't have any glove and suddenly my finger actually feel very painful and cold so <laughs> I think that was my first impression because I think it was negative something actually in Tokyo in Haneda Airport. So after that, I took the Shinkansen and come to my university, uh, Kobe University. I actually uh, have to live with my senpai for almost three weeks before I got my to my home because I actually applied for a dormitory for half a year. So my impression for my university is actually like it's very tiring because my university is like University Malaya. It's actually built in a mountain. So every day I have to like climb mountain and up, down, up, down to go to my class. I actually love to work, to walk. And so I actually like because in Malaysia, we don't have many people walking. And then when I come here, I was actually very surprised to see suddenly so many people walking on the sideway and cycling. So am I well prepared for Japan? I think so, because uh, I think I actually have set my mindset so, to Japanese so that I actually have learned about the culture a little bit of like put their shoes and arrange the shoes and then uh, do not do not eat while walking and something like that. So the next thing is that I enjoy the most of Japan is actually the season. I love the uh, the fall season because I love the colors and the, the leaves and everything. Actually, when it is fall season, I actually always go out to any Koen, Taman, to actually see Koyo with my friends or even on my own. My obstacle in Japan is actually like, I think I, yeah, language barrier, I think is the most challenging for me, especially right now when we have coronavirus. Uh, so every class is actually in online class. So I had to record everything and then i study it again yeah i think that is my problem right now thank you hi shayson thank you but i think it's not a problem maybe it's a plus because you can record the lecture and then you go yeah. it again and again and again so it's a plus if if it's a live lecture i don't think you're able to do that <laughs> yeah 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 good 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 how about lauren san when i 
when I first arrived in Japan, it was spring 2019, and it was it was actually quite cold. And at that point of time, even though I studied Japanese for one year, my Japanese wasn't really good, and I I just couldn't speak any Japanese because I was like really overwhelmed with like to come to Japan. So then. But I'm really thankful that my parents got to came with me and like guide me to my accommodation and stuff like that. And then we get to spend like one week or two together before they leave. Then I was really like really, really sad when they left. Okay, then my I wasn't I wasn't really like prepared. Like I just go with the flow when I like when I went there like yeah if anything happens then it happens I think okay so then what did I enjoy most was in Japan at first it was really hard to make friends because of the language barrier but I got to make a lot of other international students like people from China mostly from China and I can speak like Jap Chinese, so thankfully, I got to make friends with them. And then slowly from there, I thought like I wanted to improve my Japanese, so I started speaking to some of the Japanese people. At first, I was quite intimidated by them, again, because of the language. But then I think if you don't try like to go out and like speak up, then no one will like come and talk to you so like you should really go up and like try your best to talk to them and they will talk to you okay so and then what were the obstacles i faced was yeah again language barrier because i i received like a lot of japanese letters and i don't i like don't really get what they say and because it's like in all in japanese and kanjis are so hard so it's really difficult for me to understand and then and next the culture is a bit different from malaysia like malaysia is more easy and all but like japanese they are like very like strict on time and all so then i guess like we have to all like follow the rules quite strictly and all yeah and and yeah that's all i guess <laughs> thank you but uh, Rose, can can i just ask one more question that when you say you face a lot of uh, language barrier especially after even you 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 prepared one year before going to japan okay? yeah how how do you overcome this barrier when you're in Japan? Oh, uh, okay. So it's actually a really funny story. I actually was like, I just really wanted to speak Japanese well, so I can like just go on with my normal life. So I like watched a lot of um, Japanese uh, like TV shows and like mm -hmm. drama. And then like, like I just pause here and there and then like I just repeat what they say or like when my friends talking in school then I just listen to what they say then it's like oh when they say like ah oh, so nano then I'll be like oh that's how you say it. then I'll be like oh so nano like that <laughs> <laughs> yeah I see I see that's that's good a, a sort of very and, emotion yeah mm -hmm. yeah and like try more to speak with like the young Japanese so that you get to learn more of the like like how to say like the slangs they are using if not you don't get what they say and all uh, yeah. yeah I see I all think right. that's like quite important good good thank you Lauren let's go to Liu San hi Liu San wa so this is what I got me が始まる前日に、前日のことだったんですよ。で、あの、正直に、あの、ロックダウンをやるなんて、あの、考えもしてませんでした。なので、あの、十分に準備できませんでしたよね。
、あの、もう本当にその前日に、もう家族、uh, my family と一緒に、あの、もう本当にヒヤヒヤし、もう緊張しながら、あの、荷物を片付けたりしましたね。で、その後、あの、友達の何人かと一緒に、あの、日本に来たんですけれども、あの、まあ、例えばこのホテルに泊まりましょうとか、で、あの、ここに行くのに、こういう、あの、なんか、交通機関、あの、まあ、バスとか、新幹線とか使った方がいいよみたいな話は全然していなくて、あの、もう本当に、あの、何も決めていませんでしたし、あの、右も左も全然何もかも分かっていませんでした。なので、最初の頃は本当に、あの、大変でしたが、今は、えー、やっと落ち着いてきて、あの、いました。そうですね。あと、今の留学生活についてちょっと話したいんですけれども、一番楽しんでいるのは、やはり、日本の方々、特に日本の若者とコミュニケーションをすることです。あの、まあ、私はマレーシアにいた頃、あの、プライベートではあまり、えー、人と、あの、日本の方々と、えー、お話しするチャンスがあまり、あの、ありませんでした。特に、あの、日本の若者と、あの、話すことも、あの、できませんでしたよ。あの、友達、日本人の友達がいなかったので、なので、あの、今は積極的に、もう日本の若者と、えー、どんどん話すように、えー、していますで。特に私は今、あの、まあ、ライブラリースタッフという、あの、図書館の、えー、っと、スタッフとして利用者さんをサポートしていくという、あの、ピアサポーターとして、あの、活用、活動していて、で、その中で、あの、やはり他の日本人のスタッフとコミュニケーションを取ったり、あの、まあ、実際利用者さんに日本語で対応しなければならないので、あの、もう本当に日本語を、えー、ずっと使っている状況です。なので、あの、それをしていくな上で、あの、まあ、こういう考え方もありますよという、あの、新しい視点、あの、新しいパスペクティックを得ることができますね。それが一番楽しいことかと思います。で、私に今ある、あの、一番、私が今あっている一番多分難しい点、一番、あの、そうです。一番難しい点は何かというと、やはり新型コロナが、あの、その流行り出してから、もうなかなか外に出ることができないので、あの、もう特に去年に関しては、あの、学校に行けない日も、えー、たくさんありました。なので、もう普通の学、学校生活を過ごすことができなくて、えー、っと、あの、残念やなと、えー、思う時も結構ありますね。で、それを乗り越えよう、の乗り越えるために何をしているかというと、まあ、学校は、あの、オンラインイベントとかをたくさん開催していますし、あとあの、まあ、そのオンラインで他の人とつながる方法もいっぱいあるので,で、そういうのを積極的に使って、もう、あの、少しでも自分の、えー、大学生活に、あの、何か、えー、意味のある、自分の大学生活で、えー、意味のことを、えー、たくさんしようと思っています。以上です。あルーさん、ありがとうございます。やっぱりそうですね。MCO は一番大変ですね。はい。I'm sure that same as Malaysia, MCO, all the students are not, cannot go to the class, cannot go to school. Yeah, they will stay home and follow classes. So in that case, then maybe perhaps you should do it at home rather than go to Japan.、Eh? Since the classes are all online, they show. Yeah. <laughs> But it's good that Liu san do some,、uh, what do you call the arbaito in the、uh, library. And they were able to mix around with a, a lot of Japanese people. So, ne, same as Lawrence, then you get to、uh, interact with a lot of Japanese people, especially the young, young Japanese people. Ne, to me, it is ne, you got t h s ne. Hi, okay, let's go to my last question for this, for, for today. Yeah, all right. Okay, what I like 
So this is my question before we accept questions from the audience. Okay, I'd like to ask, what are your future plans and why? And how do you prepare for it? Yeah, how are you preparing for it? Yeah. All right, okay, let's start with Amil san. Onegaishimasu. Amir, on your mic, please. Hi, Hi. Uh, so this name, Mirai no Hanashi, this guy. Hi. Um, well, in short term, I want to graduate from Kosen and try to apply uh, a university, which is I've already uh thought about in going to Toyohashi Gika and uh, Gunma Degaku and Nagaoka Degaku. So long term I mean I want to use more of my Japanese skills to make more friends and try to you know I mean, hang out with each other and stuff. We, I mean, it kind of gets lonely if you don't make friends and I don't know about I, other people, but I can't go with loneliness. It really uh, brings me down sometimes. So when that happens, I tend to uh, go out, walk, uh, for walks, sampo. Uh, sometimes I go to my nearest anime shop and look at all the figures, figurines and stuff. That's what I do. And that's what I do when I get down, I suppose. So why is that? Because I want to finish my degree here that's the foremost i want to do how do i prepare for it is well i just have to study i guess well studying is really just one thing but the other thing is trying to keep your balance in social life like hanging out with friends uh, talking to other people and seek help from your teachers and friends when your studies aren't going well. So yeah, I guess that's it. Hi, thank you, Amisa. Amisa, can I just ask one question? That because you are from Kosen, right? So yes. meaning that, do you automatically transfer your credits to university, or, or well, how how does it? Because I'm sure that a lot of audience may be interested in what is Kosen. Oh, so Kosen is technically uh, called like a technical school. So once you're there, I mean, for me, I was from, for me, uh, I prepped for two years in Japan. Uh, in Japan, I mean, not in Japan, in Malaysia for two years. And then I took an exam, which is an entry exam for Kosen. So after that, we entered the Kosen starting from third grade, third year, because Kosen have five years. So we entered from third year and until five, we graduate. But the graduation level between Kosen and high school in Japan is um, from the third year, uh, third year Kosen is the same as uh, first year, you know, Chugako, Chugako Kara, I mean, Chugako Kara, Eto, and uh, Shingaku Sureba, so no, Kosen Ka, Eto, Kosen Ka, uh, 高校に入る 
そのこ、あ、高専だ、高専だったら五年、五年間勉強して、はい、あ、高校だったら三年間、はい、と、あ、高専の、あ、僕が高専の三年から入ると、えっと、高校の三三年と同じです。ああ、うんうん、高校に入れ、はい、ああ、わりかで、シニアハイスクール、ね、シニア、ああ、シニアハイスクール、インジャパン。そう、from、ああ、starting from fourth and fifth year、ああ、we are the same as、ああ、because 高校、after they graduate、they have to go to、ああ。A university mm, mm, starting mm, from year one, but mm. us, uh, course and students, we can、uh, start entering the entering university from the third year、oh. after after our fifth year and、uh, graduation. I see, I see. So, meaning that you you will study at university for two more years to get a degree, is that what you mean? Yes. Ah, Naruto. わかりました。ありがとうございます。Thank you very much, a m i さん。はい、let's let's listen to シャイさん。シャイさんお願いします。Okay, so my plan for the future, I think, ah,、uh, right now I'm actually I'm studying marine engineering. So my plan for the future after graduating is actually finding some work. Ah,、uh, I have two options: whether to work in Malaysia or Japan. For Japan, I actually have seen like you. Ah,、uh, you guys know that I live in with my senpai, two senpai. So both of my senpai is actually searching for jobs right now. So I'm actually like I've been learning with them on how to make a resume, how to go to interview, how to answer the exam, and so on and so forth. So. I wanted to work in Japan because if I actually got a job in Japan, ah,、uh, that's usually a one is six months to one year of training. Yeah,、uh, so during the training they will train me for everything related to the job, so that when I actually enter the job industry, enter my career, it's actually like I don't get overwhelmed with new. Things. This is not actually done in Malaysia, so I think that's the one of the plus of me working in Japan. But yeah, I'm still searching because、uh, in Malaysia, I don't know if we have a lot of、uh, marine engineering course, marine engineering courses. Because I'm actually、uh, studying studying to actually work on a ship, so it's actually like very. Rare job in Malaysia, so yeah, I think I don't, I don't, I don't have any concrete plan yet. So, uh, the other thing that I want to do is actually like in the future, I want to before I graduate, I want to travel to Japan, through all of Japan because, yeah, that's it. Uh, I don't have any, no. I don't go to many places yet right now <laughs> because of work and be, because of the schools and so on and so forth. So the next thing that I want to do in the future is actually travel to maybe on the northern side because I want to see the nature there. Yeah. Thank you. Hi, thank you, Charlie. Some very interesting. Yeah. Perhaps maybe after you graduate, you can sail a boat around Japan. Ah yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> it be a it be a very nice experience, I think. Yeah, as you say, marine engineering is a very rare course. Hi, hi, hi. Yeah, and same with senior. I think it be a very good. You learn a lot from them, especially as you say, yeah. How to write your resume? How to how do you attend interviews and so on? Yeah. Hmm. Gamati kudasai. I watch so many of my senior actually get rejected. <laughs> <laughs> But then again. Every rejection is a lesson learned. Yeah, you become、yeah. a better, you become a much much better candidate. Every after every rejection, so tell your tell your senior not to give up. Yeah, all right. Okay, let's go to Lawrence. Hi,、right? Lawrence Dozo. 
Okay, so my future plans are after I graduate from my school, because I'm, I'm majoring in back design. So I plan to, if I can, I would want to work in like a Japanese company. I'm not so sure if like I can yet, but I would want to work in Japan. And then maybe in the future, I would want to open my own brand if I can. Yeah. And how am I preparing it for for it is that actually I'm not sure how am I preparing it, but like I'm slowly trying to make and sew my own bags and then I'm going to try to sell it on online soon. So that's how I'm preparing for it, I guess. Yeah, that's all. Very enterprising. Before you graduate, <laughs> you start making your own brand. But may I? Ask I mean, one? just like a small online shop. But still, but still, still very it... enterprising already. You're testing the market, right? But may I know why bags? Why bags? Um, mm. okay. So, cause the previous school I went in was like, um, a design school, and I learned fashion business. Mm. And then in that school, I. I learned how to make clothes and all, but I feel like making clothes, it's very hard work. Like you have to do everything very precisely and all. And maybe, maybe I like to make things, but like not maybe, maybe not make clothes. So I have like, uh, like this like handicraft class and then we could make bags, we could make anything we like, just like komono. Mm, mm, yeah. Mm. And then, so like I tried making bags and hat and I really enjoy like sewing and like making bags. So that's how like I found my passion in like bag designing. I see. So I was yeah. like, okay, um, I will want to pursue my studies in bag design. So that's why I came to this school. Yeah. Great, great, great. Hi. I hope I I hope that you 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 have your brand soon. <laughs> Thank you. I hope so too. <laughs> Hey, let's uh, lastly let's go to Diu-san. Hi, よろしくお願いします。はい。そうですね。え、私は今メディア社会学について勉強しているんですけれども、で、その中はその中で特にあの広告の研究にえ、とても興味がえ、湧いてきました。で、あの、私は今え、2回生、まあ、あの、大学2
uh, advertising. I think that would be a very good uh, feel. I feel that it be it be a maybe perhaps a new feel. I think, yeah, yeah, that'd be a quite 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 a bright future. Hi, hi. Thank you, thank you very much for all your 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 your, your sharing. Hi, and I. Let's see. Do we have any? Hmm. Okay. Uh. Hi. There's one question someone like to ask. Perhaps maybe we could look at this. Okay. This is from Siti Salasia. She asked that is it easy to study in Japan as a Muslim, especially if she's talking about food and prayers, all the religious uh, obligation, mm -hmm. all right? And then have you had non non halal food? I don't think they were. <laughs> but anyway, let's let's have both uh, Amir and uh, and Sherry to answer this. Hi, Silaka. Hi. Uh, okay. Uh, it. Nak kata senang ke tak senang? Uh, susah juga sebenarnya <laughs> sebab nak cari makanan halal ni atau sebab kat, kat Jepun ni tak ada cop halal jakim kan so nak cari yang macam halal tu memang susah lah yang kalau rasanya kalau duduk sendiri um, kalau tak tahu apa-apa memang cari makan untuk macam ikan ke atau sayur-sayur macam tu lah macam uh, pescetarian macam tu and then uh, sebab saya dah ada sampai dekat sini so dia orang banyak uh, tolong dalam uh, tunjuk mana makanan yang boleh uh, mana makanan halal yang kita boleh dapat contohnya macam ada satu kedai ni nama dia uh, Gyomu dia jual Uh, daging ayam halal, sausage halal, ada chicken nugget yang halal. So, lepas tu ada juga dia macam uh, dia importkan makanan Malaysia macam selalunya keropok-keropok lah, keropok ataupun uh, makanan tin dari Malaysia. And non halal food eh, ah, yang tu tak ada bang. <laughs> hai hai hai, arigatou gozaimas. It to Shari, you want to add something to what I may have already spoken? It, Shari tak dengar, sorry. Shari, your mic. Uh, untuk saya di Kobe, saya agak bernasib baik lah sebab Kobe ni pusat kira memang ramai orang Muslim. So, kalau saya naik kereta api, pergi ke dalam 10 km akan ada masjid dan kedai halal oleh Pak Arab. So satu komplain lah pasal Jepun ni makanan dia tak ada pedas. Ha. Bila tak ada pedas ni saya macam hidup nak mati lah. Hidup segan mati tak mahu. Alhamdulillah sebab ada Pak Cik Arab yang jual cabai saya dapat <laughs> Itulah salah satunya dengan rempah ratus sebab Jepun dia tak ada macam bunga cengkeh, bunga lawang pasal makanan non halal itu lain cerita lah. Makan masta, ada atau zai masta. Let's take one more question. This is a very interesting question. Maybe perhaps some of you can answer. She was uh, from Lin. She said that she asked, "What is the most culture shock that you experienced?" In Japan and why? Anyone would like to share this? Uh, okay, yes. I got one. Hi. Oh, okay, you can go first. <laughs> It's okay, Lauren can start. Yes. Uh, okay, so. Um, I'm I'm not sure if like it's a culture thing, but in Japan, a lot of people like to train like. After work, they will have like nomikais and all, and so like in the train, there's always like um sadarima on the train, and then like if you like, cause they drink a lot, and then when you, they drink a lot, uh, they just like sleep on the train or they pee on the train, yeah, like they do like all sort of stuff. So like the first time I was in Japan and I saw that, I was so shocked. I was like. Oh my gosh, I didn't see this in Malaysia before. Like <laughs> in Japan, like they just sleep in the train, like sleep at the whole bench. 
Yeah, like people like naked on the train and stuff like that. Yeah, I was really shocked. <laughs> yeah, that's all. <laughs> But I think I think that's a very rare occasion. Uh, I've been to actually, Japan for quite some time, but I've not seen this when I was there. No, it, it happens almost every day. Like you people, do? Oh. yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey. I see it quite often. Hi. Okay, this is only only Lawrence experience, not everybody. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> how about how about the the rest? We only have about a few more minutes left. Hi, Silakan. Okay, uh, so uh, ni nak kata culture shock boleh kata juga sebab uh, first time masuk belajar dekat kelas diorang macam senyap je, semua, semua senyap Ingatkan kan senyap tu macam semua faham tau tapi bila lepas tanya eh lepas kelas tanya diorang faham tak tak? Oh, benda tak faham buat apa <laughs> Even sensei, even sensei yang, even sensei yang um, ngajar tu, dia, dia orang makan macam uh, uh, Ichiji Teki ni macam tanyalah uh, wakarimas tak kah? And then semua orang akan senyap. Um, of course, me being <laughs> someone that doesn't, uh, haven't learned something, I mean, semong, uh, I mean, another another subject in Japan, I won't understand completely but on some level I could understand and I don't know if it's rude or what but sometimes um, the students, my friends, they come to late a class and they come from the back door of the class and they just did it without noticing the sensei i mean if you were in malaysia and you didn't notice the sensei for coming up late um you would be scold or worse you cannot go in you cannot come into the class so listen hi okay arigatou gozaimashita now uh do you some there's one question on resume kan would you like to take um sure um sorry please excuse, please excuse for all my bad english uh <laughs> So um, I wouldn't say it's easy to get your scholarship, but uh, since I'm majoring in media sociology, um, so it's something I'm really interested about. So I tend to work hard on my maybe on my everyday um, like schoolwork or even assignments or something. So um, maybe because of that, uh, I actually got to two consecutive years of uh, free tuition uh, fees. So which means that uh, I, this, this, is, this is my second year without uh, paying any school fees. And also I uh, actually I'm really honored to also get the JASO scholarship from the Japan government for also um, two consecutive years too. So which means that um, in conclusion, maybe it depends on the, how do you call it? It depends on the what you study but uh as long as you are interested in that and as long as you uh try not to slack off during your <laughs> during your classes or during uh not not passing out your um like assignments or something then i think that you will have a very high rate a very high chance to get your scholarship thank you hi thank you very much for your advice you sang hi sorry because i think we we have not much time left, okay? Now, before we wrap up the show, may I ask each of you to share a Japanese word or phrase that you like most or influence you a lot? And perhaps tell us why. Yeah? All right? Let's see. Uh, shall we start with Amir san So, um, what you're seeing in the screen is Kampeki o Mizasuyori Mazu Oraseru. So what it means is uh, done is better than perfect. So this phrase, uh, should I say, is really close to me since um, perfection is something of a trait to me. I don't know. Uh, I mean, uh, it's something that held close to me until 
uh, I started uh, le- uh, I started studying in Japan. So, I mean, there are some times when you get down and sometimes you feel unhappy. But I remember the things that before coming to Japan is I tend to try and work hard for completing my tasks or anything that is related to studying and with that uh, I succeeded Alhamdulillah in coming to Japan so perfection is sometimes a good thing and sometimes can be a bad thing so it's better to complete your task or uh, homework or whatever you're doing in life and that's it thank you hi arigato gozaimasu very very good advice ne hi let's move on to uh ami ah uh, shahyu san so what you're seeing on screen is a kanji for kokoro zashi this means uh semangat hello semangat dan determination saya pilih kokoro zashi sebab ini adalah macam cerita lama lah. Uh, I have my sensei during my preparation school. He is actually like quite eccentric sensei. Every day he will ask me like, Kokoro ga suyo hito? Hoi. <laughs> so everyone will always say, he will always say every day, Kokoro ga suyo hito. Uh, orang yang hati kuat, orang yang semangat, angkat tangan. Uh. Dia akan selalu cakap macam tu dan daripada situ saya macam bersemangat. Daripada situ saya dapat semangat dan kokorosasi ni juga adalah slogan bagi kelas saya semasa di AJ di mana sensei itu dia sewaktu mengajar dia akan sentiasa membuka buku bahasa Inggeris untuk dia nak jawab toys. So daripada situ saya macam Wow, you are very you are very hardworking and st- you want to study the uh, TOEIC even though you got like maybe less than 50% during that time. And right now, I think last time I watched is maybe last week on his Facebook, he actually got like 900 on TOEIC. I was like, oh. <laughs> so yeah, I got from the Kokurudashi. Thank you. はい、なるほど。ありがとうございました。Very interesting ね。心強いですね。はい、OK。Let's move on to Lauren. OK。So my, my favorite, OK。My favorite like word is men and the meaning of it is feeling and thought. And why I chose this kanji is because、uh, it's quite similar to Shahir's but it's a bit different as well. The bottom kanji, there's like kokoro in it and it's heart. So I feel like if you don't put your heart in your work, your work won't turn out good. And I feel like putting your heart in, it shows your effort and it just shows like how well you did your work when like you hand it up or like, like in whatever thing you do, I think you should just. Pour your heart in and do your best for the work so it shows your effort. Yeah, that's all. Thank you. なるほどね。はい、putting your, all your hearts into it ね。はい、and lastly, h e n r y u さんお願いします。はい。えー、そうですね。私が紹介したいのは、えー、我は我、人は人なり、猫は猫という、えっ、ー、と、まあ、ことわざではないんですけども、名言です。えっと、まあ、私は、あの、犬派なので、ああ、だから、あの、これは、もちろん私が言った言葉ではありません。あの、村上春樹さんという、あの、日本の有名な作家さんが言いましたが、で、村上さんは、あの、ラジオで、あの、まあ、このことについて、あの、話したんですけれども、ただ、その詳しい意味とか、その、
、それについては全然話していませんでした。ただ、あの、文字、その、まあ、あの、これを見て、あの、まあ、こういう意味じゃないかなと思ったのは、あの、日本、あの、人はそれぞれ違うので、なので、あの、他の人に無理やり、えー、合わせる必要がないという意味では、なのではないかなと思いました。まあ、あの、日本語を勉強する、日本に留学するという、えー、道に進む、に進む人というのは、えー、周りにあまりいないかもしれません、ね。ただ、あの、もし、それが本当に自分のやりたいことでしたら、あの、まあ、自分の道を、信じて、あの、まあ、そのまま頑張って歩んでもいいんじゃないかなと思いますね。要するに、あの、他の人に無理やり、えー、合わせなくてもいいと思って、あの、私も実際、あの、この名言を、えー、そうですね、常に心の中に刻んで、えー、頑張っています。なので、なので、もし皆さんも、えー、同じ、えー、考えを持ってもらえたらいいなと思います。以上ですはい、ありがとうございました。Very, very interesting of the, the four, of, four of your advice. ね。はい。Putting all your hearts into it, having some hunger, all right, and then finish whatever you do rather than seek for perfection and be yourself as what Liu San says. ね。はい。This is very important. I think these are very, very important sayings that you, I mean, that We will make you successful, especially when you're in a foreign country, I think. Yeah. Just, just very, very enlightening. Arigatou gozaimashita. Thank you very much, everyone. Hi. And I wish you all the best in your studies. Yeah. Hi. Okay. Now, we are coming to the end of the show now. Okay. Well, Mina san.、Uh, Firstly, I would like to thank、uh, Pusa Bahasa Teikyo Malaysia for their kind assistance in today's interview. Thank you very much.